When we were kids, lots of us only had a few games available to us at any given time, so we would replay them over and over again, mastering the mechanics and memorizing the stories as though they were scripture. Today, the abundance of experiences offered across dozens of platforms and through constant digital sales encourages us to play as many games as possible. And yet, despite this modern gaming ecosystem, many of us return to games year after year that we first played decades ago. Speaking for myself, I know this is a trend that's going to continue, even as I try harder every year to play more games that I've never touched. That being said, I thought it'd be fun to share the five games that I've returned to the most. The ones that I've booted up and usually beaten more times than I can even remember. Now before I get started, I should note that the way these games are ranked is based on estimated playtime. This is by no means a concrete data-driven account of exactly how many hours I've pumped into these games. It's more of an attempt at an honest reflection of how many times I've booted up one of these games' menus and ultimately submitted my mortal consciousness over to the digital world and characters within. What? Number five, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. For most people I talked to, Ocarina of Time, A Link to the Past, or even the original Legend of Zelda was their first time having an adventure in the Kingdom of Hyrule. As a kid, although I had poked around a Super Nintendo with A Link to the Past at a friend's house, Link's Awakening was my first Zelda game. This game was released in 1993 on the original Game Boy model. I was only four years old at that point, so when this DX version was published in 1998, I was nine. Realistically, that was probably a much better age for me to jump into the imaginative concoction of boss battles and puzzles and exploration and surreal story that this game offers. I have no clue how many times I've trekked my way around Koholin Island, picking up items and instruments and working my way toward the encounter with the windfish at the end. But this cartridge right here was pretty much locked into my Game Boy Color constantly for several years. Number four, Super Smash Brothers Melee. In the spring of 2002, the Nintendo GameCube had been on the North American market for about four months and my 13-year-old self had been pining for the thing for far longer than that. I saved my birthday money, sold my Watermelon Red Nintendo 64 and all of its games, and purchased a brand new Indigo GameCube with Super Smash Bros. Melee. I had been obsessed with the original Smash Bros. game on N64 for years and had been playing it for years with friends, but only with friends because I actually didn't have a copy of my own. This only served to deepen my obsession with Super Smash Bros. Melee as the number one GameCube game I was determined to get. Now when I say I was obsessed with this game, I mean it. I read every bit of news I could find leading up to its release, and I would stare at screenshots and magazines until my eyeballs liquefied. When I finally had the game in my hands, it was pretty much the only thing I played until Super Mario Sunshine came out in August 2002. Melee remains my favorite Super Smash Bros. game, and although I pretty much just play the Wii U title from 2014 now, I think the amount of time that I put into Melee probably outweighs the combined total of hours that I put into all of the other titles in that franchise combined. Number three, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Pokemon Gold and Silver took everything that was great about the first generation of Pokemon games, polished them, sped them up a bit, and ultimately delivered more of what most of the kids who played Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow wanted. I remember playing through Silver on the school bus and at home and with friends and just marveling at how fresh and exciting the experience felt. The game was in full color, provided a whole new region to explore, and of course added 100 new Pokemon. When I beat it for the first time, I couldn't believe that in the post-game content you were able to return to Kanto and earn eight more gym badges. I made my way through this game pretty fast and naturally I wanted to experience the whole game again, so I then made my way through Pokemon Gold and caught all the version exclusives that I could and then would steal my brother's Game Boy Color so I could transfer all the stuff I'd caught into my silver version. As I said with Link's Awakening, I have no idea how many hours I actually pumped into these two games or how many times I'd restart one of them to enjoy another adventure, but Pokemon's second generation remains my favorite in the franchise's history, and it truly encapsulates what I've enjoyed most about Pokemon over the last 20 years. Number two, Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid was unlike anything I had ever played. When I first loaded up a demo of the game I'd gotten at Pizza Hut, I was blown away by its cinematic presentation, its dark, cold environments, and its brooding, percussive soundtrack. It was also the first proper stealth game I'd ever played, so the challenge presented by sneaking around Shadow Moses Island was fresh and addictive to my young mind. 
It was like James Bond, but more serious, more mysterious, and more fascinating because of its interactivity. It's another game I bought with birthday money, this time in 1999 when I was 10. Over the years, I'd estimate that I played through this game from start to finish probably more than 30 times. It's not an especially lengthy game, but it laid a foundation early on for what I now appreciate and expect from high quality video game storytelling. Number one, The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. Without question, Oblivion is the game into which I've put the most time in terms of raw hours. I first saw gameplay back in probably 2006 or 2007, maybe around a year or so after it first released, and I'm sure my jaw dropped because I'd never seen a video game, any video game, so closely match what my ideal open world game was. Interestingly, despite seeing it at my friend's house and Knowing that it was around, I didn't actually make a move toward getting it for several years later. I didn't even start playing the game for myself until late in 2010 when I was a senior in college. I upgraded a few pieces of hardware in my old PC, went to GameStop, and bought this Game of the Year edition for 20 bucks. From there, I poured dozens of hours into my main character's story over the course of the school year. Dozens turned into nearly 200, and I'd start new game saves with new character builds, devoting more time to exploring Cyrodiil well after I'd finished my main character's story. All told, I would guess that I've played Oblivion for anywhere between 250 to 275 hours across PC, Xbox 360, and PS3 but I really can't be sure. It's obvious that I really loved the game, and despite some of its flaws and some of the facets of the gameplay that now, more than a decade later, feel super outdated, it remains one of my fondest gaming experiences and one of my most impressive time sinks. <laughs> there you have it. Those are my five most played games of all time. Together, those titles represent a significant part of not only my childhood, but my teenage and adult gaming too. I'm sure that some of you guys saw one or two games on this list that you would probably put on your list too. So let me know in the comments which five games you've played most. Anyway guys, like this video if you liked it, give it a thumbs down if you thought it smelled like a used bedpan, and subscribe to tune in for a new video next week. Thanks for hanging out at Crosschop, and as always, play heavy.